This is Daily Armenia, Civilnet's Daily News Digest. Here's what you need to know today. The European Union has called on Azerbaijan to ensure the return of Nagorno-Karabakh's Armenians to their homes, release former Nagorno-Karabakh leaders held in Baku, guarantee international access to Nagorno-Karabakh, and recognize Armenia's territorial integrity. In a statement yesterday, the EU urged Azerbaijan to create the conditions for voluntary, safe, dignified, and sustainable return of refugees and displaced persons to Nagorno-Karabakh, and to allow international access to the region and independent monitoring of the situation on the ground. There should also be a comprehensive amnesty for all Karabakh Armenians, including their representatives, Russell said. At present, eight high-ranking former Nagorno-Karabakh officials are being held in detention in Azerbaijan, in addition to more than three dozen Armenian prisoners of war. Continuing, the EU called on Azerbaijan to reaffirm its unequivocal commitment to the territorial integrity of Armenia, as fears continue to mount in Yerevan that Baku may now be setting its sights on invading parts of Armenia itself. Back in Yerevan, Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan today again pledged to do everything in his power to keep the more than 100,000 Armenians forcibly displaced from Nagorno-Karabakh in Armenia, as it came to light that at least 3,000 of them have already left Armenia for other countries, mainly Russia. Last week, that number was 2,500. I hope we are giving a clear message that having them stay in Armenia is the top priority. I urge our brothers and sisters forcibly displaced from Nagorno-Karabakh not to consider emigration from Armenia as their primary plan of action, Pashinyan said at his weekly cabinet meeting. Azerbaijan's lightning offensive against Nagorno-Karabakh last month led to the near-total depopulation of the region, leaving Armenia grappling with an unprecedented migration crisis. The Armenian government has since earmarked about $100 million to support people who have been forcibly displaced from their homes in Nagorno-Karabakh. That includes one-time payments of about $250 to every displaced person, as well as monthly payments of about $125 to cover rent and utilities for the next six months. In an unexpected move today, Pashinyan's cabinet approved plans to relocate the so-called Academic City Project from the town of Ashtarak, about a half-hour drive from Yerevan, to the outskirts of the capital itself. Last year, Pashinyan unveiled a wide-ranging educational reform program that will see many of the country's public universities merged, consolidated, and moved to a new academic city. The plan will see the number of public universities in Armenia reduced from about two dozen to just eight. The Armenian government did not immediately provide any reasoning to justify its decision to relocate the planned university complex from Ashtarak to Yerevan, and still has not released any budget or funding plan for what promises to be a multi-million dollar undertaking. The government says the complex will be located on a 700-hectare plot equivalent to nearly 2,300 American football fields and expects 44,000 people to live and work there upon the project's completion in 2030. The plan has been met with strong concern at a number of universities, including Yerevan's prestigious Brusov State University, where students last year staged walkouts and protests demanding their university not be merged with other institutions. You can also check out Civilnet's latest interview with Leonid Nersisyan, a defense analyst with the Apri Armenia think tank. Leonid sat down with us yesterday to talk about Armenia's ambitious military reform plans and break down the reasons behind Armenia's growing defense cooperation with France and India. The full conversation is up now on our website and YouTube channel. You can also take a look at the latest episode of Civilnet's weekly Insight series out today. This week, host Eric Hakopian reviewed the prospects and potential fallout of an Azerbaijani invasion of southern Armenia and much more. The full broadcast is up now on our website and YouTube channel. And finally, the Civilnet number of the day is 1,155. That is the number of university students forcibly displaced from their homes in Nagorno-Karabakh who, as of yesterday, have already been enrolled in public universities in Armenia, according to Education Minister Jana Andreasian. And as always, please follow Civilnet for the latest news and independent reporting from our contributors on the ground here in Armenia.